a lot of the research and discussion around non-competes happens uh, with regards to the law. And there's tremendous heterogeneity across the US in, in what states will do. In some states, you could be fired from your job. And if you get sued over the violation of a non-compete, can, it can still be enforced, even though you were fired. Uh, other states, it won't be enforced. And then everyone else is just kind of in the middle. And it, it does look like if you're, if you're in a state, I, I did one study where we tracked workers over eight years of their career. We had every single worker in 30 states over roughly a 20-year period. <coughs> and what we found is that if you start your career in kind of an average enforcing state, uh, you are going to earn 5% lower earnings relative to a non-enforcing state like California over those eight years, regardless of where you end up, regardless of where you go. Uh, so this, the, the, the enforceability of this contract does appear to, to, pl to play a role. Um, but I also want to highlight that the contract itself appears to matter when it comes to workers choosing to move. And so I'll just briefly say, in, in, the, in, the, in the kind of legal literature, there's this idea of a chilling effect, that workers are chilled just by the existence of the contract, regardless of whether it's enforceable or not. And when you ask workers, you know, what do you know about the law? You know, most of them don't know uh, what, the, what the law is. But what their default is, is they believe that contracts they put their name on are enforceable. And they abide by them, even in, even in states like California, where, they're, where they're not, they wouldn't be enforceable if they went to court. And so when it comes to workers choosing to move between jobs, what, what we see is that the use of these provisions appears to be what matters, not necessarily their enforceability in court.